Hey guys, we are in the basement and today, yesterday guys, on this episode of John's Arcade. Well guys, we're gonna go back to the garage because this is part number 735 of the Journey Restoration. That's right guys, we're going back to the garage. <laughs> and we're gonna work some more on the Journey Monitor because in the last video, if you guys remember, <laughs> Well, we had collapse on the monitor, okay? And in the last video, we replaced the vertical ICs and we reflowed solder. And well, we fixed the collapse, okay? <laughs> but then we had like this image that was like, like tripled. It was all like broken into, actually, I'll show you right here. So you can see the image looks like this now. And I don't know what is causing this, okay? And actually, I already removed the chassis. The game is off right now. The chassis is in the garage, so. We're gonna go to the garage and we're gonna troubleshoot. We're gonna try to figure this out. And honestly, if we don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm up to here with this. I'm not kidding. <laughs> so. And before we go to the garage, I wanna remind you guys, uh, go to arcadeevent.com because BroFest is coming up here in a couple weeks. It's the first uh, weekend in June. Uh, it's June 3rd and 4th, Friday and Saturday. You can register for the event, it's completely free. Yes, it's at Fun Spot, the world's largest arcade in Wears Beach, New Hampshire. It's totally casual, okay? But if you guys wanna go, you gotta pre-register, that way we'll have your badges ready. Go to arcadeevent.com. Also, if you guys want a shirt, if you're gonna attend the event or if you want me to ship you a shirt, I have very limited sizes left. I ordered just a handful of extras. Once they're gone, they're gone. Go to arcadeevent.com. If you can order the shirt, that means I still have them left. And it's 25 bucks shipped anywhere in the US, okay? And then 20 bucks if you pick up at the event. And then also, please consider uh, helping get Clint to the event because Clint Torres is the official referee of the event. He's an arcade referee. The scores are gonna count, okay? But I can use some help getting the, him there to cover his airfare and hotel and there's a button there called it says call to clint it's a 20 dollar donation and all of that will go right to clint to pay for his ticket and his hotel and, and all that stuff so i appreciate it in advance all right guys let's go to the garage <laughs> let's see what happens <laughs> and if we don't fix it we might be installing our first lcd display in this episode <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's go to the garage. All right, guys, we're back in the garage, and yeah, it's a little cleaner out here. Anyway, I got the Geo 7 chassis right there for the journey uh, sitting there, and we're going to go through it and see if we can figure out where we screwed up. Uh, did we bridge you know, some pads with solder. I, I don't really know, and I also grabbed another Geo 7 off my shelf over there. Now, this one... I don't think this thing works. I honestly don't even know where it came from. I've got a bunch of spare chassis I've collected throughout the years, but I thought we could use this one from my shelf to kind of compare with this one when we're doing like continuity tests and stuff, you know, or, or even testing some values. Um, so I thought, you know, if we if we test from point A to point B, we have continuity on this one, but not on that one, then maybe we bridge solder somewhere. So I thought we can kind of compare the two. And then also, before we start though, I want to do a quick little update here. <laughs> so, so Cloak and Dagger and Computer Spaceball, um, both not quite ready for the basement just yet. Um, it's tempting to bring Computer Spaceball down, but the, the really the TV needs to be addressed. Um, there is a wave in here. But I just want to give you guys a quick little update here because I did pick up some knobs, okay? Now these are basically uh, made for Tempest. And if you look at the one that was on here when I got it, it's very, very similar. So this is the one that was on the game when we got it. We only had one and we needed two. So it's definitely in the ballpark. Um, now, I, I'm not even sure if this Reproduction Tempest one, which I think I got from ArcadeAdventures.com, is exactly the same as the original one. I, I, I have this on my Mad Planets, too. I think, it's, I think they're all pretty much the same. But anyway, th this is way more playable now. Um, it feels pretty good. But we got to fix this curve on the monitor. It, it is kind of really bothering me. There's a definite wave in here. And so I, I guess we'll do a video later. It, it's like, there's so much stuff, guys. <laughs> there really is a ton of stuff. Um, you know, this thing here, do I just put it in the basement for now and just move on with my life? It's very, very tempting, you know? 
Uh, the game's playable. The paddles are kind of small. I don't know if that's right, but it doesn't bother me because it kind of makes the game uh, kind of challenging, so I have no idea. I'm very tempted just to throw it in the basement as is. And then Cloak and Dagger, though, I, I definitely want to finish up this one. Um, I've got the kick plate art right here. And then, you know, I was talking to my friend Ty Glory on Twitter, and he was saying that I should just put some laminate over this and then apply this. And, you know, I've got a a big pile of white laminate over there and it's very tempting. I'm just wondering if I can somehow cut the piece the exact width here that I need. And I, I probably could, I, I don't know. We might end up doing that. I think that would be really nice and simple. We just basically take the coin door off, lay this game on its back, cut a piece of laminate the exact width here, put it on, uh, take my router, cut out the hole for the coin door, cut out the top and the bottom, and then apply the artwork, and then we'd be done with the kick plate. And then up here, I did get a new uh, speaker grill, because this, th by the way, this cloak and dagger was originally a defender, okay? Uh, if, if you're not familiar and, and didn't see the video before, um, basically Atari made a, a kit, cloak and dagger was a kit game. They sold this kit to basically to convert Williams games, yes, Williams defenders and Robotrons and Jousts, etc., into Atari cloak and daggers, and that's what happened to this game here. This was originally Originally, an Atari Defender, an operator in the 80s bought the cloak and dagger kit and installed it. However, at some point though, the original plastic grill that was here, because the Williams Defender and, and, and Robotrons and all those games, they have a continuous grill that goes all the way across that's all plastic. And what happens though is those get punched in. And so someone removed the plastic grill and put like this grill right here over the speaker. And this is, looks like it's from a Frogger to me. Anyway, I got the right grill. Actually, I got a reproduction. Again, originally it was plastic. Uh, the reproductions, there's a guy on eBay and Claw that sells these, same guy, I believe. Um, he sells them as powder-coated steel. And so we got this right here, and this is gonna go right in here. And this, this is really gonna look good when, once we put this in here. So we'll spend a day in the garage in a week or two here. I kinda wanna get this project over with because I really wanna bring this game into the basement. I, I just really dig cloak and dagger, you know. Anyway, we can't do any of that though because <laughs> the basement's a mess, guys, because Journey is down. So I want all of us <laughs> to pray to the arcade gods that we actually fix this chassis in this video so we can move on. <laughs> so, all right, let me um, let me heat up my soldering iron here. And actually, I guess we'll kind of sit down with the multimeter and just kind of take a peek around here and see if we can find any bridge solder, okay? Because I I, I kind of think that's what, what I did here. And, um, and if you remember in the previous videos, we did all of this. We replaced the vertical ICs in the last video, and then, then I reflowed all the solder uh, because the monitor had collapsed. We had uh, a vertical collapse, and so we replaced those vertical ICs in here. And then it's like we stitched, fixed the collapse, but then we had a new symptom with this kind of tripled image that was very weird. Um, so anyway, let's kind of just poke around here and uh, just kind of inspect our work, you know. Did we bridge something down here in the pot area? Um, I also remember when I was soldering that like solder dripped and landed somewhere. Was it over here somewhere? Like I really remember that. Like I was soldering something over here and I remember like solder like flying down and landing somewhere over here, and I remember taking my, my soldering iron trying to get it off. I'm just trying to remember everything we did. So we basically reflowed all the solder in the 400 area, the 500 area, um, and I remember reflowing these pots down here. Like, I don't really see any opportunity over here to bridge solder, no. I don't. Let's just kind of take a look here. And then we put the vertical ICs in right here. And I just want to do like a continuity test in this area to see how these vertical ICs are supposed to behave. Like I was curious, um, are we supposed to have continuity? Like, if I were to come in here...
So right here. So is that the metal? Yeah. So this right here is the metal. Well, that's interesting. Hmm. Let me just kind of compare that over here. So, so basically what I'm doing here is these are the three legs of the transistor and this is the metal of the housing. Now let's see if I get the same thing over here. Yeah, I do. Okay, so these are behaving exactly the same way. We have continuity from this leg to the metal, and then this leg. And then if I come over here on the other one, it behaves exactly the same way. So that, that is correct. Um, now down here, these pots. Um, yeah, I'm not really seeing anything over there that I screwed up. I wonder if this chassis works. It's kind of tempting to just throw that in there and see what happens. I have no idea the history of this thing. I really don't know where it came from. I got it somewhere at some point. All right, so let's take a peek here. Also, I got a lot of emails from you guys about this topic here. It'd be interesting to read some of those because um, a couple guys had ideas about where this problem might be. There's some kind of a factory mod. Oh, so this right here I did. And let's just double check that. I added this jumper wire right here, right? So if I go like that, does that same thing happen here? And it does. Okay. So... We refloat solder in here. I don't see anything that's touching. We refloat solder here, here, here. I guess we'll just kind of just come in. All right, so we're getting beep right there. D402 to C405. D402. Wait a second. Hey, what's going on right here? Okay, so. Where was I? Oh, here. C. C405 to D402. Yeah, you do get continuity there. Let's see. I'm just kind of poking around here. Just seeing if anything jumps. Oh, what's this? How about that? No, that's not bridged. I'm just seeing if anything jumps out here and just testing adjacent pads and see if they beep. Like, I can kind of tell where I refloat solder. And if we don't find something here, the only other thing I could think of is if, if I were to swap out these parts, could the new vertical ICs I, I got, could they have been out of spec? And could they be causing the trouble, the problem that we have? Be interesting, God, I just, this board looks pretty good here. <laughs> I'm looking at it I'm like, what's wrong with this thing? Maybe there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> uh, how this? Let's reflow. I kind of want to reflow the pots. And then, let's see, where does the video input go? Right here? Let's double check these. I'm not sure if I reflowed those. Yeah, I know this isn't very exciting here. I'm just probing around. Mm -hmm. 
so I was beeping there. X303. Okay. <sighs> God, you know, guys, nothing, nothing is really jumping out at all. I, I have to tell you. I guess we'll just keep looking now. Alright, so four and five beeping. It's beeping over here too. Let's see. That all looks good. Nothing looks bridged in here. All right here. Nope. So all of those horizontal are touching. Okay, that's right. Let's double check all this. Okay, that's right. Vertical height. No beeping. No beeping. Linearity. No beeping. No beeping. Beeping there. Beeping there. Let's see, this is vertical hold. So vertical hold beeps like crazy. Hmm. No, no, wrong one. All right, so vertical hold right here is beeping. Vertical hold over here is not. Okay. I'm getting beeping from there to there. Hmm, that's behaving completely differently. Continuity. So across all three of those on the vertical hold, beeping over here. I only get beeping from the center to the left, not from left to right. Did I just find something here? Boy, all four of these. Yeah, something's wrong right here. And this makes sense, right? Vertical hold. That's the problem we're having, right? It, we, it's like rolling. Well, I guess vertically we have an issue, right? Where it's skipping the image. That's interesting. What's even more interesting is I did not reflow the solder right here. <laughs> I didn't touch this. Could we have a bad vertical hold pot? It totally behaves completely different. Alright, so what should I do? So you can see here, if we're going to demonstrate what's going on. So. Definitely found something that's different. So if I go to the vertical hole pot right here and go here, here, okay, it beeps. If I go left to the center, it beeps. And if I go to the bottom pad on all of these, it beeps. All of these are connected right here, okay? And then if I come over here and do it, it doesn't beep right there, okay? No beeping. Beeping there, not there, and not to down here. 
no beeping, but here to here should beep. So this, there's something not right here. So should we swap the vertical hold pot? I wonder if I have an even junkier chassis because that one, that chassis is kind of in good shape. Let me go on my shelf and see if I've got an even, if, if I've got a really ugly chassis that we can pull that off of. Okay, I grabbed another G07 chassis. Now this one's got a cracked neck on it, so this is perfect. So let's, let's check how this one behaves. And let's keep track of what's what. So this is our rebuilt journey one. I can tell because um, the caps have markers uh, on them. The caps are marked. So let's see how this, this one behaves, if it does the same thing. So vertical hold. We are getting continuity from here to here. Yep. Yeah. T this totally... So the thing is, is it the pot that's causing the problem or is there a bridge a short somewhere else that's bringing those two to connect? Um, I mean, there's really only one way to find out is swap that part out. So um, let me heat up my desoldering gun here and we're gonna swap those pots. Now, now, uh, what's interesting here is, is why, if it is the pot, why did this re did this appear? Like, why is this a thing now? Or was it a thing all along? Vertical hold, right? I mean, whatever problem we had, it was definitely a vertical problem. So it, it really could be that that stupid pot. All right, let me heat, let this heat up, and then we'll yank that out and see what happens. All right, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna yank the one off of our journey one first. And I want to just kind of measure it. So it's right here, right? No, it's right here. I'm just kind of adding some solder to this real quick. So it should just be three tabs here. All right, my that doesn't sound good. Hang on, we might have to clean this thing. Where's the box for this thing? I should really get my tools for this. Doesn't sound good, does it? So I dropped this thing, and uh, this back part doesn't really stay on. See how it's all cracked in here? And so it's supposed to screw in here, but it's all cracked. So it's not a giant deal, but it's irritating. Okay, let's see if that comes out now. Okay, so here it is, and you can see that it was all the way to one side. Now, could that be why we were getting continuity? Because it was completely closed? Let's see what we get here. So it's 43 ohms. So I don't really know how that's supposed to measure. Um, what I'd be curious to see right now too is that since we removed the part, if we still have continuity in that area, and that'll tell us if the part was contributing to that or not. So let's see. So we were getting continuity from here to here. Okay, so that part was what was giving us continuity then. 
We've, we verified it because the part's removed. So if the short was somewhere else and, and it was coming in here, um, we would still be getting continuity here and we're not. We do here because this, this pad's connected. But here to here we were getting continuity. So that thing was bridging it. Now, it was bridging it from here to here though. And now we don't get it. Hmm. It's definitely... Uh, I don't really know what to make of it. The part's acting differently out of, out of the circuit. But I don't have continuity there. Alright, let's remove the one from our junk board here. And let's just kind of see how everything behaves. So, it's this one right here. So let me add some new solder to this. So let's see. Ah, hot. Don't want to mix these up. So let's just see how they behave. Okay, now well, look at that. So I'm not I am not getting continuity from here to here. On this one, And this one I am. I'm getting 66 ohms. And then on this one from here to here, do I get a reading? I don't. I don't get any kind of reading. So look. So if I were to measure, so if I measure from this leg to here, I'm getting 68 ohms, okay? So there's resistance between them. There's continuity though. And here I get nothing. If I come from here to here, I get nothing. Here to here, nothing. Let's see. Yeah, that side's open, isn't it? Interesting. Well, they definitely behave differently. I don't really know what all this means. <laughs> They're both kind of in the same position, I think. Yeah, they're, they're relatively in the same position as well. Okay, well let's put this part in and see how it... And, and then we'll do our continuity test again. Okay, so let's go ahead and solder that in there. Boy, it'd be pretty great if that's that's all it was, huh? And and how ugh, I don't want to get excited yet, because <laughs> I don't know if we found it. But something's definitely not right there. Okay, so now, if we come in here and do continuity. 
so before we had continuity from here to here, and now we don't. We do it here to here, but that's on the same pad. If we are basically getting continuity from this point to this point, bridging this gap right here. We're not now. And we compared it to two other chassis, and they are both... And, and, and plus, it's the vertical hold. My God, did we really figure it out? All right, I don't want to get too excited. Because <laughs> I've gotten excited before out here, and then it doesn't pan out. So, <laughs> all right, let's just keep going on this little expedition here. Or do you guys want to go in the basement and try this out now? Sure is tempting, isn't it? <laughs> Let's just, uh, I want to just poke around really quick though on these other pots in here and just see if there's like here to here, nothing, nothing. Yeah, so all the pots now are behaving the same way. Nothing. Wait a minute, that one. I can't really tell here. Is that... Let's check, let's compare that one. That's the vertical linearity. I mean, what are the odds that we have two? Okay, v vertical linearity on this one beeps, but not there. I don't know what to make of that. Okay, actually this this one behaves the same exact way. So I'm guessing that vertical linearity is supposed to be that way. I'm curious if I can like adjust this. If I were to turn this. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I'm wondering if I was reading that wrong before, but the part that we pulled out, I mean, this is a variable resistor, right? So two points, at least two of these points should give us something, whereas the one I just put in there gave us nothing. Just, just really curious about this now. 9.8 ohms. But we, I wasn't doing an ohm test, though, before. I just had it on continuity, which would give us an ohm reading, though, if there was resistance between the two points. Yeah, I don't really know. I kind of feel good about this, though, because we're definitely getting a short from, from one point to the next. Um, I'm starting to doubt now if this could be it or if this part's even bad. I guess there's only one way to find out. <laughs> um Client. All right, I guess, you know what? Let's go in the basement. Honestly, it's the only way we're going to find out. We got to just try it. It definitely was behaving differently. There's no doubt about it. Just kind of poking around where I solder, where I reflowed solder, because I reflowed a lot of solder in the uh, 400 area all throughout here. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not really seeing anywhere where I could have screwed up. All right, let's go in the basement. Let's put this in the game and let's see what happens. What do you guys think? <laughs> That's all we could do. All right, let's go back down to the basement. All right, guys, we're back in the basement. So I put the chassis back in the journey. Um, so it's all ready to go. Let's kind of take a look here. Basically, I just plugged everything back in and screwed it all back together. Um, there's two screws, one up here, one on the bottom. And I did all the plugs, got the anode in there, the ground wire on the neck board, uh, the degaussing wires, the video signal, and the yoke wires. So everything is all plugged in and ready to go. So I'm going to go turn the arcade on. I don't know why, but my confidence level is low right now. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, oh man, it's Sunday, it's 4 o'clock, it's 4.30. <laughs> Did I fix it? Because <laughs> if I didn't, oh man, what does that mean? <laughs> we have to take it off, go back to the garage, oh my god. All right, I'm going to turn the games on. Let's see what happens here. All right, you ready? One, please do it. Okay, here I come. All right, cross your fingers, guys. Ready? Please. Now I got no, oh, nope. didn't fix it I knew it I knew that there's no way I was that lucky <laughs> I just <laughs> there's just no way there's just no way I was that lucky that I just magically found the pot that was bad I knew it I knew there was just no way <laughs> I hate this game <laughs> I'm so sick of this stupid topic I just don't want to deal with this. I just don't. I don't want to work on this. I really don't want to. I'm just telling you, I don't. <laughs> and I don't... What is this? What does it mean? Stupid, retarded... Duh. <sighs> what is it? I knew... I, I mean, I just knew. There's just no way... I got that lucky. There's just no way. <laughs> I'm like, come on. What are the freaking odds that I just magically found the problem like that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is causing this? I just... I just don't know. I, I just I really don't know what the problem is here. And is it... Is it the is it the new ICs that I got? Are they like out of frequency or something? I'm really tempted to swap the ICs from the other chassis. Huh? Something is really weird here, guys. You know, this is very strange. All right, here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to. It's four thirty. I'm gonna pull the chassis, we'll go back to the garage. I'm thinking about swapping the vertical ICs with an air chassis. I don't know, it's just something tells me that the ones I got on eBay are not good. I just, I don't think I screwed up anything. All right, let's go back to the garage. All right, so the only thing I could think of here is the parts. The parts I got from eBay. Are they bad? Is there something wrong with them? Because all we did, okay, all we did in, in the video that caused this problem was I replaced these two vertical ICs and I reflowed solder, okay? Assuming that the reflowing of solder is good, then the problem is with these ICs I replaced, right? Because these ICs made everything change. It made the pitcher not be collapsed anymore, okay? But we had a, a kind of a triple pitcher, right? 
And I'm wondering if I remove these vertical ICs and swap them with the ones on this junk board with the broken neck and see if we get something different. It's the only thing I could think of. Uh, it, it seems <laughs> logical to me. Trying to see where those oh where the ICs went because I I had a whole bunch of those ICs because I bought like a, a bag of them on eBay and those were the ones I used and actually the brand name the brand name and the um the part number were identical to the ones I pulled out of there but you know were they bootleg I don't know you know was it some weird China stuff that I bought um. So I just don't know where I put those though. I just want to find them just so I can at least compare. Um, I don't know where I put them though. Uh, all right, so tell you what, let's let's just go ahead and yank off the ones from this junk one over here. And we're going to just transfer them from uh, the junk to our to our good one here. And I'm going to need a screwdriver to remove the, uh, the screws from the heat sink here. Yeah, I'm just, uh, all right, so let's go ahead and take these guys off here. One, two. I'm just going to add a bunch of solder to these. Okay. These things are probably like glued on there because of the heat sink paste. Okay, there's one. So someone asked if these things had uh, insulators and they don't. Oh, don't break the leg, John. All right, so there's one right there. D1138. Attaching Matachi. All right, let's pop the other one off. Okay, here comes the next one. D1138. So we could try them in the transistor tester. I don't remember. Last time we did this, we kind of um, got the spec sheet and kind of learned all about these, actually. So this is just some cheapo transistor tester that I got on eBay and I like it. So HFE was 96. Hmm. Trying to remember what the spec was for this thing. It 
to test that on. HFE is 100. So I think our new ones had like a, a much higher HFE. And I, I don't remember, last time we Googled uh, what the correct value was, the tolerance for this thing. I don't remember. Whatever. So let's um All right, let's go ahead and swap these bad boys. So these parts, D1138, W9, they're C parts, not identical part number, but let's see. So I just, I just, I don't, I don't want to do this again. I just don't want to be working on this stupid monitor right now. I got better things to do right now. It's so irritating. All right, all right, let's get some, some paste. <laughs> I can think of 50 things I'd rather be doing than this right here. <laughs> I just, I'm over this topic. You know, this is Journey. We restored this game how long ago? I moved on. <laughs> All right, right there. One's in. Let's get the next one in. It just doesn't want to line up. Alright, 
all three legs are through. Just gonna put a little bit of this on there. I'm getting bit by mosquitoes out here. All right. So we're just gonna screw this down, solder it on the bottom. And I guess we'll go through and just double check our work again. So there's this little screw that screws this heat sink and screws the, uh, oh come on, just get in there. Can, you, can this be more irritating? <laughs> So they're in, let's solder them in. Okay, new ones are in. Actually, the new old ones are in. I am curious to see like how these guys test comparatively. Other ones were like 9,600. Look at HFE is 145. So we're getting. HFE 124. So if I were to open up the spec sheet for this thing. Hang on, maybe I'll do that. These are C parts. Okay, so I found the data sheet here, the Hitachi data sheet for the 2SD1138. Um, and it says here that B, there's B parts, C parts, and D parts. The new ones I got are D parts, okay? And it looks like the HFE should be, this is a C part, should be 100 to 200. So these are in spec, okay? And then, it should not be below 100, but <laughs> the old ones I had were, and these are also C parts. Assuming that the number in the bottom right corner is what they're referring to as a C part. So the old parts, the ones I pulled off this other chassis were had low HFE. Um, they were below 100, both of them. Uh, and so are the ones I pulled off. So I don't know. <laughs> Maybe these new parts are just too out of spec. I, I really don't know. 
Um, well, I guess we should try it. What do you guys think? Is there anything else I want to be looking at down here? Yeah, I'm just... Just don't know how I got into this situation with this monitor. <laughs> uh, the weird part is, is that originally I was fixing it by... Uh, let's look at this stuff again. Uh, there's some meaty, meaty connectors over here. All right, let's go back down to the basement and, and let's give this a shot. It's all we can do, right? All right, guys. Um, I, I put it back in already. So we're ready to turn the arcade on and, and see if we fixed it. Uh, I just, I don't know if we fixed it. Uh, if this didn't fix it and we have the same problem, then we know the issue it's not the vertical ICs. It's got to be something with what I did when I reflowed the solder. So let me go turn the arcade on. And we're just kind of going down the line here. It is tempting, though, to uh, just try the other chassis, isn't it? Okay, here we go. <sighs> Please. Nope, same problem. All right, it's not the vertical ICs. It is something else. It's something else. Is it this stupid yield connector? this <sighs> it's not an adjustment right let me find my TV adjustment tools this is just irritating <laughs> I just <laughs> I want it over. I just, I don't, I don't want to talk about this anymore. I, I just don't. I don't want to look at it. I don't want to think about it. I mean, I, my mind is nowhere near journey right now. Just, I've moved on emotionally. <laughs> All right, let's see. We got some pots here. Uh, this is vertical one. Causing this. Let's see. That's not doing nothing. So that's the vertical hold. The next one should be vertical linearity. It's not doing nothing. These are horizontal adjustments. Now it's vertical size. And then... Uh, boy, that pot there.
that's the vertical hold, isn't it? That's the pot we swapped out. Let me take a look here. Let me double check that. No, that's... That's a frequency pot. That is... That's horizontal frequency, that pot. Doesn't it seem like that pot's doing this? Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> it's such a weird problem. And if you guys get up here. What what does it mean? Yeah, I don't know. I'm done. <laughs>